But in my flesh I shall see you up in the air. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good morning, dear friends. You're all very welcome here for the funeral mass of our dear esteemed parishioner, Bridget Madden, whom uh, we thank God for her lovely life and the lovely witness that she gave down through the years to her Christian faith. We remember her husband, Danny, God rest him over 20 years. Uh, past and with whom she's now reunited, and of course her daughter Bridget, God rest her. Uh, Ailey and Mary, we welcome you so much, and we know at this stage you must be very, very tired, so we reach out to you as a Christian community in love and friendship. Our sons-in-law, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, nephews and nieces, cousins and friends, uh, everybody connected to Bridget by blood, marriage, or friendship and faith. And any of our brothers and sisters from other churches, you're welcome here with a heart and a half. Dear friends, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us for our sins and bring us all unto everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Dear friends, let us pray. Almighty God our Father, we firmly believe that your Son died and rose to life. We pray for Bridget, who has died in Christ. Raise her at the last day to share the glory of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And we welcome now those who are going to read and will come forward now, please. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation. But they are at peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them to be worthy with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So at alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was that he might be both Lord of the dead and the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God, as scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is God, therefore, that each of us 
must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill. There he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak, and this is what he taught them. How happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are the gentle. They shall have the earth for their heritage. Happy those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Happy those who hunger and thirst for what is right, for they shall be satisfied. Happy are the merciful, for they shall have mercy shown to them. Happy are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Happy are the peacemakers, they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. Happy those who are persecuted in the cause of right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of calumny against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, dear friends, I can tell you that I have attended many sick beds in my time, but rarely one as holy and as moving as Bridget's. Down through the years, I've prayed and heard people pray for a happy death. And it sounds like a contradiction happiness and death. But I know what they're talking about. I've learned the meaning of a happy death. I'd say a happy death is a final parting of a faithful Christian surrounded by one's children and grandchildren and those that we have loved and strengthened by the last rites of the church. It's often referred to the last rites as the last fond embrace of the church for its dying members before they move on to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Bridget was a holy and a prayerful woman. Her life with Stephen and Ailey and their lovely family was a happy life. She was very much at the center of their lives, and that's why she'll be sorely missed. She took on the role of childminder to Ailey's and Stephen's children, and that wasn't always without challenge and humor. On one occasion, Enda landed his granny in it. When Ailey arrived home, Enda cried out, Mammy, Granny let the peas go dry, watching deal or no deal. So that was a big challenge for her to take on that role. And I think Ailey now will be taking on that role, will be inheriting that position. When the children asked her if they could go to the shop, Bridget would ask, would your mammy let you go? So I don't know what the answer is to that one was. Everything was done with love. Bridget also knew tough times. Her husband Danny, now departed for over 20 years, was infirm for a long time and that wasn't an easy time. The death of her daughter Bridget at the age of 42 was a great loss indeed a nightmare for one and all. Bridget and Bridget are reunited now in heaven. 
All families have their ups and downs and no one can talk about anybody else. At the closing years of Bridget's life, she was happy and she was content in an atmosphere where she was loved and treasured and where she felt safe and secure. Ailey has told me that without Stephen and his great kindness, she never could have coped. Bridget will be missed as we all miss those that we have loved and lost. But for the Christian, those we have lost are lost only for a while. Cardinal Newman wrote, And with the dawn, those angel faces smile that I have loved long since and lost for a while. From the cradle to the grave is a journey. In Bridget's case, what a lovely journey. What a lovely life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now, friends, we offer up our prayers of the faithful. For Bridget, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. That God may welcome as glory those of family and friends who have departed this life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we turn to our blessed lady, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all prayers to Christ our Lord. And now, friends, we have the bringing up of the gift.
Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Lord, receive the gifts we offer for the salvation of your friend Bridget. May Christ be merciful in judging our sister, for she believed in Christ as her Lord and her Savior. We make all prayers through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so with all the angels and saints we proclaim, Holy, Holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Donal our Bishop, all clergy and religious. Remember also our sisters and brothers who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all those who have died in your mercy, especially your friend, Bridget Madden, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Bridget, St. Oliver Plunkett, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Pray now the words, friends, that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your Church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Pray for each other, friends, everybody here, all belonging to us, all the people of our parish, anybody that has hurt us, maybe we've hurt them. People we find it hard to get along with, they're hard to forgive. People who find it hard to forgive us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Lord.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray, Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May Bridget, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life that the Lord Jesus has prepared for each one of us. We make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Sincere thanks to the family for all their lovely participation in this Mass and to the Gribben girls for their beautiful singing ministry and Willie John and Michael and our own sacristy staff. Thank them very much. We move on now, friends, to the final commendation and farewell. We'll sprinkle Bridget's remains with holy water as a reminder of baptism and then incense as a mark of respect. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Bridget. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. For one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. The Lord, Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you, Bridget, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest come unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we command Bridget Madden, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, Bridget will rise on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bridget in her life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to these prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your friend Bridget and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and Bridget once again. In peace we take her now to her place of rest. <laughs>